there's been a lot of discussion about the problems of PBR textures in TRS 2019, including the gaps that appear under track ballast and the flowing textures on embankments. I'll be showing you both of these problems and how you can fix them, as well as how to avoid them in the first place. So let's get into it. Okay, let's get started. First thing I need to do is create a small one board route in TRS 2019 for this tutorial about PBR textures, showing the problems when interacting with track and landscape with some possible solutions, and a final summary of my concerns regarding the PBR textures implementation by N3V. So while I will be creating this board and landscape in the background, I'll run through the steps I'll be going through with you in this tutorial. Firstly, I'll be adding two tracks onto the board. Both of them are procedural tracks, the first being N3V's TRS-19 procedural seasonal track, and the second will be a procedural track which is new to TRS-2019 under the label LRW, which I don't think is seasonal. Having laid down these tracks, each having a unique switch machine, I'll add a number of ballast types, both PBR and conventional, and see how each of the tracks handles that and the problems that occur. Having gone through that, including the issues and possible solutions, we'll add some grass, also both PBR and traditional textures, again covering the issues and possible solutions. Then I'll lay a spur track across the small hills I've just been creating in the background and show you one of the most serious problems with PBR textures and what I did to minimise the issues. Away we go! The first thing I'll do is load one length of TRS-19 procedural seasonal track on the left hand side where the ground's relatively level. Then to the right of that I'll lay the LRW track, but I might move that a little bit further to the right. Then I'll add a simple right hand switch on the LRW track, and off camera I'll do the same to the TRS-19 track. Then on the TRS-19 track I'll add a Canadian National Railway switch machine. And this switch machine has a light indicating the switch position, so I'll swap the switch machine over to the other side. This will show a green light, indicating through route is the left hand track. Note some switch machines don't have a route indicator, so this step is not necessary. In that case you can position the switch where access is best for the switch operator. Then I'll do the same for the LRW track, only here I am using a Norfolk and Western manual switch machine which does not have any indicator light, so you can position it where access is safest for the switch operator, as it is a manual switch. Starting with N3V's TS19 track, I'll put down a texture called TS0958 Ballast, which is a traditional texture, and we'll see how that goes with the PBR based track. It is a similar texture to what was used for the track ballast, but not quite the same, it's set to a smaller scale. You'll soon see as I move closer there is a noticeable joint between the track ballast and the ground texture ballast. The texture is a total mismatch the entire length of the TS19 track, and while this works with older tracks, it is not much use for TS19 track. And just to demonstrate the complex inconsistency of textures with PBR track, let's randomly choose another traditional texture, apply it, and examine the result. This time, strangely, there is no conflict between the texture and the joint of the ballast under the track. The only disparity here is that I picked a very light colour, which happens to be a very unlikely colour to be an extra track. A dirt or grass colour would be much better, as would also be the case with ballast scattered away from the track, which happens in many instances. So let's follow on from that with a PBR based dirt texture. I'll replace the white texture with something a lot more realistic, a wonderful dirt. As you can see here, the look is quite realistic and there's no mismatch of joint. And one final test will use the actual ballast formula that was used under the TS19 track, which theoretically should merge perfectly. And just to extend matters further, I'll add a PBR grass colour on the outer edges of the ballast. And we'll see A if the ballast looks good, and B if the grass merges in with the ballast. So as you can see, it looks quite sweet. I don't see any issues either with the ballast on the track or the grass merging with the ballast. 
However, things are not quite that simple all the time, as you'll see next. Let's try a little experiment and test some grass textures that are not PBR. Here's our first one. The texture name is shown on the screen. Well, certainly less than a successful attempt. Let's try a similar texture. The name is also on the screen. Just to confirm the results we're getting are consistent. Yep, definitely a consistent mess. So now let's move on to the LRW track and see what results I get. Now I'm using the TSO0958 ballast texture that I first used on the other track. Although the LRW track is fully procedural, it does not use any PBR textures with the track ballast underlay. So the results I'm getting here are totally different and more acceptable. However, I have to acknowledge the look of the ballast under the track is not quite as authentic as the TS19 track from N3V, but it is far less troublesome. Here with the same LRW track, I'm applying the PBR ballast that is the same as the underlay ballast of the TS19 track. The results indicate using the PBR texture under the LRW track will not be successful. Now once again on the LRW track, this time I'll use the ballast texture provided by LRW to match the track ballast. In the results shown here, I can see it looks pretty reasonable, perhaps not quite as realistic as the standard of the TS19 track, however the results are good and predictable. What I'll do now is add a grass texture to merge in with the ground ballast texture, and that's JR Grass Dark 3. The merging of the grass here with the LRW provided ballast texture are excellent. Even where the grass is strayed right up against the track underlay ballast, overall the results are excellent and consistent, as shown here in the final shot. What I'll be doing now is laying the spur track alongside and through the hills on the left side of the tutorial board. I'll start by just getting a basic location of the track in place without worrying too much about the height at this point. Then I'll use the smooth spline height tool to get the track close to its final height. And I'll also fine tune the hill so I can get at least one steep embankment next to the track at some point. Now, using the LRW track, I'll add a mix of ballast textures so you can see what the various ballasts look like when I drive an engine along the track a little later. In summary, here is a list of issues you should think about. I've talked about procedural track, 
with both a PBR based track called TS19 and one that uses traditional textures called LRW track. There are also a number of other procedural tracks available in TRS 2019. However, I'm not sure if there are any that use PBR textures apart from the N3V supplied tracks yet. And many of the procedural tracks have far more variety than N3V's procedural tracks. Varieties such as sleeper type, being wood, concrete, old, new, etc. And rail condition, new, rusty, etc. Ballast colours, no ballast, rail only, as well as chair and spike options. I've also talked about testing traditional textures and PBR textures against the track choice that you make for your route. Sometimes the match of the track and textures might initially look okay, but if you start running across uneven ground, particularly with a PBR based track, you can run into issues like black lines along the edges, gaps everywhere and texture overlaying the track in places. So it's worth doing a reasonably extensive test before you commit that particular track to your route. One warning. Ignore this suggestion at your own peril. Often you may miss errors for some time and then having to backtrack is very frustrating. I talked about mismatched textures. Mixing PBR and traditional 2D textures can sometimes work very well. Other times be a massive disaster. Again, test it thoroughly. We also briefly demonstrated how switch machines can be placed on either style of track and some of the considerations to make sure these switch machines are correctly aligned for the route they are controlling. I demonstrated quite a few ballast types, but this probably only represents 5% of what's available, so keep your mind open on that point. I hope this short tutorial has been of value to you, and if you have anything to add or want some clarification of something, maybe even to point out something that's not right, please use the comments below this tutorial to put your point of view. And remember, as always, I read every comment, and I appreciate the effort put into it, so be sure I'll respond when it's appropriate. One final request. G'day, here I am on the Western Maryland Railway in the impressive Potomac 484 steam locomotive. I'd like to thank you for staying for the full video, and ask you to give me some encouragement by subscribing if you'd like to see more. If you subscribe, don't forget to ring the bell. That makes sure you are the first to hear when a new video is released. Also, use the comments below this video if you have anything specific to tell me about. It's one of the best ways you can influence what I do next. Or to tell me about something that helps me do something better next time. Okay, I guess that wraps up this video. So until next time, hooroo!